Hello, everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. Welcome. My name is Jess Posner, and my pronouns are she and they, and I am the director of the Virtual Y at the YMCA of Central New York. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our July Virtual Y speaker series, Get to Know Your Why. Though we are coming to you virtually and we are accessible to anyone in the world with access to the internet, the YMCA of Central New York does exist as eight physical branches and three camps located in and around Onondaga County in New York State, which stands upon the unceded traditional ancestral lands of the Haudenosaunee Indigenous people. First, I'd like to offer a visual description of myself. I am a tall, larger bodied, queer white woman of mixed European and Jewish heritage who lives with chronic illness. I'm wearing an asymmetrical haircut, round glasses, red lipstick, and a black top. The background behind me is a full bookshelf and some happy plants, including a flowering purple orchid. It is my pleasure to welcome you here with us tonight. This month, our virtual speaker series focuses on some of our very own, which I am so excited about. We will highlight some of our nationally recognized programs and people. It's our joy to share our mission and action and to share these deeper looks into the work that we do to serve all. Tonight, we welcome Jess DeRogers, the Associate Executive Director of Health Strategies of the YMCA of Central New York. Next Wednesday, on July 28th, we're very excited to be joined by our new president and CEO, Bertram Lawson II, who will offer us a Y history lesson. So please do join us and tell all all of your friends and family and anyone who might enjoy hearing from him. And he is a very uh, smart, entertaining and enjoyable guy. So you'll want to join us for that. Without further ado, I introduce you to our very compelling guest tonight, Jess DeRogers. Jessica DeRogers is the Associate Executive Director of Health Strategies. And I'm just going to spotlight here her so that we can see her as I talk about her. Okay. So she is the Associate Executive Director of Health Strategies for the YMCA of Central New York. She is responsible for both addressing public health needs of our members and communities which our YMCAs serve. She holds a bachelor's in biology and a master's in exercise physiology. She is the program director for several evidence-based health intervention programs and manages a multitude of community health referral options and partners locally here in CNY. She is a YUSA certified trainer for many YUSA programs and is a successful fundraiser for these impactful programs and beyond. She sits on a variety of community committees that engage the YMCA in improving the quality and health of the communities that we serve, including the Near West Side Initiative, Jocelyn Diabetes Center Medical Advisory Committee, the American Heart Association Community Action Committee, CNY Cancer Alliance, and many more. She's a very accomplished woman, and we are so happy to have her with us, not only at the YMCA, but tonight to share more about the work that she leads here for us. Personally, she's also super active. She's an active triathlete, has completed three full Ironman triathlons and several marathons. She teaches human biology for Cayuca College and happily shares her life with her husband, Scott, of 14 years and their two German short-haired pointers. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Jess, um, and let me know if you need anything. Great. Thank you for that introduction. It was very gracious. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, when you hear all those things I mentioned about you, you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I do do that. <laughs> you tend to forget when you get wrapped up in, uh, in your work. So I'm very grateful to be here today because, um, as Jess mentioned, I do have such a strong passion for the work that the YMCA does, but also the work that I'm very fortunate to do for our association. Um, it's a lot of work that many folks, including our own members and some of our own staff. So I do see we have some staff here on here today, but a lot of people just don't know this little, I guess this little hidden gem um, of the YMCA and some of the work that we do out in the community. So if I have an audience to talk to, I'm always really happy and thrilled that I can kind of just keep sending this message out and hope that other people talk about it um, when they're out in the community, because it's very important work that we do and it helps so many people um, that are facing chronic illnesses. I mean, I think everybody in this call today will know a family member, a friend, or someone that may be um, experiencing one of these chronic illnesses. And we want you to know that the YMCA has programs and we are here um, to help you with that. So I do have a PowerPoint and I may kind of go back and forth between it um, and sharing my screen. Um, but I'm gonna pull that up as soon as I can share my screen. So let's do that. 
So, yeah, okay, that's me. So I have a video that um, I wanted to lead with because the Y of Central New York, we, we sometimes forget that we are one of the leading YMCAs in the nation. I think we don't give ourselves enough credit. We get called upon for a lot of things because we are really forward in the work that we do. And this video um, was made by the New York State um, Department of Health and we have some arthritis-based programming that they really wanted to feature. So it gives you a great snapshot of why I like this video because it shows you all in some of the programs, but some of our actual YMCA participants right here in Syracuse. And then it gives you a broad overview of how important this work is in these communities where Ys are. So let me see if I can pull that up, John. Let's see, we practiced. Okay. The why is not about a physical building. The why is about the community. We go out and we ask them, what is it that they need for us to do? And how can we work together to respond to the needs of the community? And so it's not just us sitting in the room and thinking of ideas, but we're coming together to identify challenges and to develop solutions together. Our target population that we're trying to reach is all of the adults in New York State that have arthritis. And that's a large task. And so the best way for us to do that is to identify really strong community-based partners that we can work with to take these programs and bring them out to the communities. The New York State Arthritis Program receives its funding from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And the CDC identifies a list of evidence-based self-management and physical activity programs. So that's where we came to enhance fitness as a program to support. And CDC gives us those funds and then we in turn are able to distribute some of those funds into the community to help get the program up and running. We're gonna work on those lives that curls one arm at a time. You know, when we first started with the Enhanced Fitness Program through the grant with the Department of Aging, what we realized then was that we still weren't attracting all the active older adults in the community to come into our four walls. So through that funding, we were able to take the program out into the community to come where the seniors were gathering. It's really exposed the why and the why programming and mission to a lot of folks that wouldn't have access to it. Uh, so we're real thankful for that. So what happened was, as we're feeding in the community, as we're taking care of people in the community, one of the questions people kept asking us, hey, how much does it cost to go down to the Y and be able to exercise? And as you discuss that with people, eventually you find out that not everybody can afford to go to the Y and be able to participate in things. So with the partnership with the New York State YMCA and, and uh, the health department, and then of course as well, the partnership that we have with our own local city, we've been able to start the enhanced fitness at a number of different sites in order to make sure that people could become fit. We're going to walk one foot in front of us, hands out to the side, heel toe. A lot of people don't understand that the Y is really moving into more of a healthcare organization. And we do have things to offer. We're not just a gym and swim anymore. So we can show these hospitals and these physicians that we have evidence-based programming, which they love because it's research-based, and we can really help their patients um, recover so they don't have to keep coming back to the doctor. They have, don't have to stay on medicine. So they now have an outlet, which is the YMCA, to refer to. I think that having a partnership in this community gives you more. They're, we're able to attack more in our community. We're able to go out and, and touch more lives, get more folks to come in and show them what we have. We don't want to be bound by our physical walls, but we want to make sure that we're going to where the people need us. And instead of trying to convince 30 people to come here for a class, let's go to their homes, to their churches, to their jobs, and to their schools and run those activities there. No one can do it by themselves and that public health efforts are really a group effort. So by partnering with the state health department, we are able to provide the materials, the programs, some funding, and the community organizations organizations are able to take that support and get these programs going and they have the benefit of having something that's evidence-based and they know that if they offer this you know in their communities they're going to be putting out a quality program and it really you know it helps everybody on both sides.
Okay, so we're back. Um, I just love that video because again, it highlights just the different work that the YMCA does. And again, I, any chance I get to tell people that we do so much more than what you might actually see inside of our four walls. Um, I, so I'm very grateful to talk about these programs today. You did hear about one of them, it's called um, Enhanced Fitness and you see it here up on the slide in the orange bar. And really this graphic um, shows you all of the programs that I manage for our members and for the community. And like Jess had mentioned, they are evidence-based, which really what that means for the healthcare community is that they've been researched and that they're effective, they work, right? So that helps us obtain dollars to be able to offer these programs for people that might not normally have access to them. Um, I really like to feature the top one. So I think we all at some point know somebody in our lives that has diabetes, um, maybe is pre-diabetic, or is kind of facing that, uh, that, that ailment. So that's one of our signature programs. And what we, I'm gonna see if I can, there we go. So some of these stats here are really, they speak to, I think the, the vast majority of people. And we, we hear about how ill some of our, our communities are. And that's the wise mission is to really reach those communities with these programs. But you know, if you're reading some of these stats, the amount of hospital admissions and the prescriptions that are being given out. We want to kind of take people away from going to hospitals and being on medication to really learning about self care and management of their own disease. Um, you know, their manageable behaviors, it says right there, they're, you know, 80% of our chronic illnesses are managed. And that again is what these programs at the YMCA offers are looking to do. So I love the stat, and it's just, it's a little blurry, but. What people don't realize is that 29 million Americans have diabetes, but kind of like what's laying beneath the surface is the 86 million who have pre-diabetes. So, I mean, that's alarming to me. And those 86 million, a lot of them don't even know they're in that category. So that's the population that we're looking to serve is we wanna catch those people before they become that 29 million. Um, it's such a greater pool of people, so it's a huge lift. But that's our mission and that we want to reach those people before they become diabetic. So I always tell people there's still a chance you can turn it around. Um, just some simple lifestyle behaviors that we, we do and offer in our programs. So if you're listening about this program specifically, it is for those that are pre-diabetic and that can be diagnosed by your healthcare provider um, through an A1C blood test. There's a certain value there or what you're going to see next is this fun little quiz. So I'm going to take like a minute to 90 seconds and let you kind of read the questions and kind of score yourself. I've taken it. It's very interesting to see where you fall. Um, if you score a nine or higher, that means you just are at risk. It's not a death sentence. Please, by all means, don't call your physician tomorrow and you know send them alarming. Um, just read it and kind of see where do you fall um, in that quiz. So I will, I will shut my mouth. <laughs> So as you're kind of tallying up your score, again, remember a nine or higher means that you just, you qualify for this program. And that's, again, that's a good thing in a way that means we can help you, right? So if you're looking at some of the questions, um, right away, you see the last question says, are you 65 or older? And right away, that's a nine. So you're thinking just my age alone puts me at a great risk for developing diabetes. And the answer is yes. But again, you can't change your age, right? So what do we do for that? We work on some lifestyle changes. We help people uh, figure out how to make small tweaks with either physical activity or some um, diet modifications. We don't put you on a diet. We just teach you how to make healthier alternatives or maybe swap out some recipes and um, we really make it fun. If you are interested in this class or any of the other programs I'm gonna speak about, definitely reach out to me. Jess will share my contact information. Um, you can always call any of the branches and ask um, for my contact info because we'd love to answer your questions or get you enrolled in any of these programs. So as you can see, diabetes prevention, huge, huge, important uh, part of the YMCA work. 
And as we, I'm gonna back up actually. I'm gonna go back to this slide. So we did talk about enhanced fitness. That's the other orange bar. And then the next one in red is probably our, it is our first program that we ever offered here in Central New York. It is called Live Strong at the YMCA. Um, if you ask a lot of staff that are involved with this, they will say that it's probably one of their favorite programs. And I will say that as well, because the, um, the people that we get to work with and the experiences that we share with them are so memorable. And the lives that we have the opportunity to change um, are definitely one of a kind. The Live Strong at the Y program is an exercise-based program for anyone in any type of cancer. And you can be a week out from your cancer diagnosis or 20 years. We've had the whole spectrum of cancer survivors because the definition of a cancer survivor, if you didn't know this, is basically it's you become a cancer survivor from the day of diagnosis. So no one you know, can ever take that away from you and you are always a survivor. And we, we welcome all of folks, men, women, um, we've had all ages and again, all cancer types. And it's in a group. So you get to be with other people who probably are going through very similar experiences. And then we have YMCA coaches that just kind of help facilitate that group along. You know, they definitely are recommending the physical activity part, but they're really just fostering those relationships with one another in that group-based setting. So one of my faves, by, but definitely by far. The next red one is um, a fall prevention program called Moving for Better Balance. So as we become an aging population, unfortunately, um, fall risks become a reality. And no matter kind of how hard we try, just that neuromuscular pathway that our body goes through, it, it tires over time. So the key is kind of, if you don't lose, use it, you lose it. Um, I do like that saying because it's very true as we age. So the more you can stay active and just keep moving, those muscles and those nerves in your body, they remember. And they want to keep remembering and they want to be able to keep protecting you and allow you to do the things you like to do. So it's so another group-based class, super fun. Um, a lot of it's focused around walking. So if you think, oh, these crazy people at the Y are going to make me run a marathon, no way. Um, it's just walking and uh, strengthening exercises to keep you, keep you upright rather than uh, facing the sidewalk. <laughs> um, the next one is our blood pressure self-monitoring program. This program has taken an interesting turn during the pandemic. Um, it was one-on-one -on -one based where a participant would get a blood pressure cuff. It's theirs to keep, the Y provides it for you. And you would just self-monitor at home. And it's about establishing a behavior. So if you all of a sudden decided you're gonna start writing down everything you ate for a day, right? You become way more aware of what it is that you're putting in your mouth. So it's along the same concept in that we're just teaching you a habit is that when you start taking your blood pressure every day, surprise, surprise, you actually know what the number is, right? So if somebody said to you today, what's your, what's your blood pressure? What is it usually like? And I wouldn't use the number that you probably had at your last doctor's visit because those tend to be a little high. So hopefully some of you on this call know what your average blood pressure is, but if you don't, that's really the point of this program is to just make you more aware because once you're aware, you can make changes to help improve that number if it is um, on the elevated side. So we, during pandemic, when we were shut down, we switched to virtual, which we had no guidance on, no one had ever done this, but we said, we can make this happen. So we partnered actually with Syracuse University and they had um, a group of employees that qualified for the program. Syracuse University purchased these very nice Bluetooth uh, blood pressure cuffs. So the point of the Bluetooth cuff was that it actually sent the coach their reading. So all the data could be uploaded and sent to the coach. So we were able to do everything virtually. And then they just have like a little weekly check-in on Zoom or Teams with the coach to just see how things were going. So we thought we were just doing something because we had to react to a situation. But over the last six, eight months, since we've kind of been open and be able to do things more face-to-face, -face. we've been receiving national recognition for the work we've done during the pandemic because everybody else just shut down and we just kept going. Um, we didn't want to, we didn't want to bail on these people. They were in the middle of their class and we said, we've got to help them. So we just thought of a way to do it differently. And what I love about that is that 
the way we reacted was able to create another program format for our participants. So we have some folks that can't get to the Y for various reasons. So now we're able to offer this program to them right there in their house. So we're super proud of that and we hope that it continues to reach more and more people. Now the next one in blue, we were fortunate again, um, because we are so accomplished here in Central New York with some of these programs, they invited us to take part in a childhood obesity intervention program. It's called Healthy Weight in Your Child. And it's actually a program for the entire family. So I felt that was very important because it's not just about the child. It is definitely the whole family looking to make a change. And so mom, dad, or whoever the caregiver would come to the class with the child. And we had siblings sometimes attend, which was really helpful because again, why should it just be one child to make the change when it really should just be the family? So we held this program over at our Northwest Y. They had some great families that took part in it, had really great success, and we definitely look to offer it again in the fall. We have a strong partner with a doctor, uh, he's a pediatrician in the area, Dr. Draker. He did speak on one of these virtual uh, lectures and he's been a great referring partner for this program. And then real quick, the last three we are working on. Um, they're not out there nationally as a YMCA, but I'm really focusing in on Parkinson's a little bit in relation to brain health. Um, there's some peddling for Parkinson's programs and a boxing for per, uh, Parkinson's locally. So I really like to see us bring that to the Y and offer more help for those um, communities right there. So that's a lot. Um, I just want to take a breather um, and kind of transition into, so you've heard all about those programs. Now, the work that I do is really trying to get non-YMCA members to be exposed to these. And if you are a Y member, that's great. And you definitely can take part, but I'd love to expose other community members to the YMCA through these programs. So what this, it's called the Community Integrated Health Model. It's a very, I don't know, fancy schmancy term, but really in the healthcare community, they are looking to how can they provide more access to care to their patients besides a medication, besides another office visit. So something less clinical, what better partner than the YMCA? So I am always so proud when I get the chance to go in and speak in front of anybody because I have like all of the, the resources and the assets and like the best organization to um, you know, give to them. So it's an easy job for me. And then really what we're looking to do is kind of all these things you see on your slide is we just wanna prevent more of these chronic illnesses. We wanna help delay and allow people to live a better life. Um, it's all manageable and the why can help you do that. And I can't do it alone. I, I, we definitely have a team of uh, coaches who have taken time out of their day to become certified and help and mentor all of these program participants. So this little fun bubble model just shows you kind of the work, the why is kind of in the middle if you look at it that way. And then we're responsible to kind of keep all these other outside bubbles going. So we really look at the picture of not just the program, but how can we make sure that we are inclusive and diverse and that we make sure we're accessible to all. We have to think about all of these moving parts on the outside in order to make a successful program that everyone can take part of. I really think that's an important part of the work that the Y does is to make sure that we're inclusive and that we can have the ability for everyone to access us. So what does the community need? Think about where you guys live, right? So if you live in one of the suburbs, if you live in the city, um, if you live in a very rural community, think about how are people around you accessing care? And you know, are they going to the ER every time they have a symptom? Are they go visiting one of our urgent care centers? Or are they making a scheduled appointment with their healthcare provider? So a lot of people go to the ER um, and it's just a lack of, education around, I have this symptom going on or I'm feeling this way and I don't have a healthcare provider that I have a regular relationship with. So we're trying to reduce a lot of those ED visits by offering a place for people to come to for help with that. We're not saying we're doctors, we're not trying to say we're going to diagnose you or prescribe you, but just know that we have these programs um, right there. But how do we get to those places where someone might live 30, 40 minutes away from a Y and they don't drive 
and they have no one to take them there and Uber's too expensive. So that's where we're trying to take these more into the community. And just to give you, I guess, a little idea of how we do that currently, we have run these programs in senior centers, um, in church basements. We do them at employer break rooms. So they don't always have to happen in a Y. So if you're thinking, how can I access this? Um, I'm always looking for new places to offer them. Um, I've had people call me and say, I have a group of women. We meet regularly for this book club, but we're very interested in monitoring our blood pressure. Well, to me, that's a win-win situation. These women are already getting together every Monday night. I'm just going to tag along to their book club and we're going to talk a little bit about monitoring blood pressure. And it's, it's just as simple as that. So I would kind of test all of you to think about how you can maybe be an advocate for some of these programs in your community, talk about them in your little you know, social groups. And um, we would really appreciate you being able to be an advocate for these. This graphic, it might be tiny on your screen, but a neat kind of thing that we have in our back pocket that a lot of people don't know, and maybe you do if you've been to a provider that we partner with. I know I was at my doctor for my annual physical the other day, and right on the wall in front of me was one of my flyers, and I was like a little giddy kid. I was so excited that A, it was up, because they should have hung them up, but that they were promoting it, you know, and it wasn't buried, you know, behind a bunch of other things. So when a doctor pulls up and they're like Krauss is one of our providers, when they pull up um, your chart and they are thinking, you know what, they could use some help uh, monitoring their blood pressure. They pull up on the chart places for blood pressure self-management and the YMCA of Central New York comes up on their little computer and they can just easily click a button and we get a message saying that their patient is interested in this program and then we can reach out to them. So that's all this graphic is really explaining is that we have the ability to be at the provider's fingertip and then reach back out to you and say, we're here to help. Um, it's one of a, a project that we had worked on for many, many years because it's hard to get into the healthcare system, um, especially as a YMCA, you know, nonprofit community organization. We weren't in the medical world, but now they are, they're listening to us and knowing that we have programs that they can offer um, and we can do much, much better. So what did we do um, in 2020? And hopefully everybody kind of remembers one thing they did in 2020 besides wear a mask and socially distant. Um, but again, the YMCA's doors may have been closed during some of that, but we were very active at making sure we maintained a lot of the work that we had put in place prior to the pandemic. So I had mentioned we transitioned to virtual and I do have to give a shout out to Jess P here on this call because without her, ingenious efforts and work and um, help for all of us. She made that possible um, as our director of virtual programming. So thank you to her. And we, I mentioned the Syracuse University class, we converted that with really no help and no guidance. And we just kind of said, we're gonna do this and it's working. Um, we're looking at transitioning now into 2021 at moving more of these programs to virtual option. We're still gonna have face-to-face -face because we can do that again but we're thinking that we could reach so many more people if we have an option, right? So helping people access these programs differently. And something else that we're, I'm proud of, and um, I see some staff on this call as well that were instrumental is we managed to stay connected to program participants. So some of these people, I think of like our cancer survivors, they were in the middle of their program and we had to shut down and they felt this as a valuable resource. So we needed to reach out to them. So we mailed letters. We sent emails, um, we checked in with people, you know, one-on-one -on -one with phone calls just to see how they were doing. And now they're all super eager to come back. So we're excited to have everybody back, including our community partners who, you know, obviously in the beginning were very bogged down with their healthcare side of things, trying to figure out their new processes and be safe, uh, returning to giving patient care. So now they're ready um, to turn to the Y and say, okay, we're ready to start referring patients back to you you know, they need you guys to, we're, we're, we're kind of at that point where we can put you back into our, our workflow. So that was 2020, seemed much worse than that, right? <laughs> so something that we're always looking to do is uh, we're looking to connect more and more to the community. And I love that word down there on that graphic that says bridging community and healthcare. We kind of probably always separated that, like, well, the community does this, 
but my healthcare provider does this. Now we're looking to bridge that gap and that gap or that bridge is the YMCA. Um, we are well ingrained in this community as far as being known, but we wanna be more known um, and more used and accessed uh, in the healthcare community. So we're always looking to expand to new communities. Um, two that we're currently working on for 2021 is the North side. Um, I'm proud to announce that we do have a new YMCA on that side of town. It is on Butternut, kind of kitty corner from St. Joseph's Hospital. It is called the Northside Women's Wellness Center. So unfortunately, men on the call, it is for women only. And this is with a very direct purpose. There was a two year process of developing this center in partnership with St. Joe's because there was a need on that side of town where there's a, a lot of immigrant and refugee uh, families and the women in those families were surveyed and they make the majority of the household health decisions. So they weren't taking care of themselves, they were worrying about the family. And another rationale for the women's only center is that a lot of these women for religious reasons cannot be in the presence of men without their um, head coverings. So in order for them to become well comfortably, uh, this center was created. And we've seen it really flourished in the last few months as some of our COVID restrictions have lifted. So I encourage you to definitely visit as a Y member you have complete access to that as a, a, a woman YMCA member. Um, we have classes, we have a fitness center. You can just come and hang out in the lobby and read a book and hang out by the fireplace in the winter. Maybe not so much now, <laughs> but it's a, a nice addition. So you see the next bullet. Um, this, is, this is a different animal, but we're always looking for ways to sustain our programs. So my job would be to make sure that if I were to go away, these programs need to stay. They need to exist at the YMCA because it's not about just Roger. It's about these programs, right? They've got to continue to help these communities. So we've got to find ways that they become paid for. So, you know, Medicare and Medicaid are very interested. We are a CDC recognized program for the diabetes prevention program for Medicare, which means they will reimburse a program participant for that program. And I think Medicare is coming along really, really soon because they're seeing how good it's working with Medicare. So that's a whole nother demographic of people we can help. And then we have partners like Syracuse University who are a self-insured business. And you know they are willing to put forth money to improve the health of their employee, which is super gracious. So if there's any other employers out there, we can make that happen. And then um, we're always looking to add. So if you know of people, your workplace or a community partner, um, definitely send it to me and I would be happy to get that conversation going. And just to give you an idea, um, I'm a visual person, so you get to see everybody's logo on here, but these are all of our community partners just locally and it, it's always growing. You know, there's some, some big names out there. I mean, I look at SOS, they're probably one of the largest orthopedic groups I know of. Um, you kind of can't come across to anybody that hasn't gone to them for any orthopedic issue, but they they refer to our why over 300 people um, in a given year just from their physical therapy groups. So th that's a huge, huge partnership. And you know, places like Upstate and Krauss, our local hospitals are uh, big advocates of the why. And you know, we're always again looking to expand into more things. So we, as the YMCA, also sit on some various groups. You know, we're I'm very active in the American Heart, the CNY Cancer Alliance, our city school district. And you know, I make sure that I'm always putting the why out there and being a huge advocate for the why being involved with any of the work that their organizations are doing. So I'm gonna take a moment and let all of that sink in. But if I can stress one thing, um, if nobody you know, were to ask a question or anything is that please know that the why has so much more than a gym and swim. And it's kind of a cliche saying, but we do see ourselves in having something for everyone. And if it's not you that this lecture resonated with, maybe it's someone that you are close with in your you know, friends or family circle. So please reach out to us and we'd be happy to help in however we can. And I'm gonna stop sharing. Thank you so Thank much, you. Jess. Jess. Sure, it's a lot. 
Yeah, it, but it's also amazing. It's really incredible amount of information that you shared with us. And I know that when I first saw one of your presentations on these programs, I was so impressed with the work that you do and the deep roots that um, the healthy living programs have within our community, right? Like originating from the Y, thinking about the why as a healthcare provider, which is such an ambitious goal, right? Like such an ambitious vision to think about how we can support people at all stages of their health journey, right? Um, and so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about like what that means in terms of like the why as a healthcare provider, like what does that actually mean? Oh, great question. And I love that you're kind of using it, the lingo very casually. It sounds so natural. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, we're really help, trying to put ourselves in that place where, again, instead of them telling you you need to go to a rehab or, again, another clinical partner, we, we really want them to have the why name in their little menu of options. And I think we, we, we're there. Um, I just want it to be a little bit deeper it's taken years. Um, I've been in this role for 10 years. And I think really over the last five, it's grown to where now the medical community is taking us serious. Um, and I'm, I'm very, I think, uh, I don't know. I'm in awe of it. Sometimes I don't believe it. But when I'm out, like I said, at my own doctors and I see it there, I'm like, okay, that's a win. Because you know they could have just thrown that piece of paper away. Um, when we're on their little medical record chart on their laptops, when you when they come into the appointment with you, I'm like that that's a win because before we weren't in front of their eyes. Um, so these small little nuggets kind of put us in that stance that we are becoming that provider. Um, and there's not many choices in the community. We are one of very few, other than a clinical one, that they can refer to. That's pretty amazing, um, you know, because it's also in terms of framing the why as a place where you not only are in recovery, right, but it also then becomes a location where you can maintain your health and it becomes part of daily practice, which is what's sort of so beautiful about understanding the greater scope of the why and the work that the why can and does do in terms of the lifespan of individuals. Um, so I just wanted to thank you for sharing all of that. Um, and at this time, I'd also love to invite anybody that's on the call, if they have any questions or any comments or statements that they'd like to offer, you can go ahead and throw that into the chat. We're also a relatively small group tonight. So if you'd like to raise your hand or unmute yourself, we can definitely have a conversation. Um, otherwise, I have a few more questions for Jess that I'll keep on asking um, until somebody uh, throws up a question or raises their hand. Um, so please take a few moments to do that. Uh, we invite you in to this this space uh, in order to do that. Um, I will say one more thing. Um, you, you kind of reminded me of you when you're talking about you know being a healthcare provider. And I always think about why do people choose us, right? Why do they trust us? What is the rationale behind why they feel safe coming to the why? And what we hear from particularly groups like our cancer survivors is that they don't want to go back to their provider because that reminds them of more of that like medical, that clinical setting. And for them, that's a not happy memory, right? They may have been receiving treatment there. So even if there's like a support group over at hematology oncology, which they're great at, just going to that location might not be a happy place for them. So they wanna make new memories and new experiences at a place that doesn't have maybe a negative association with it. And what better place, I mean, than the YMCA, so. Thanks so much, Jess. It yeah. totally resonates. Um, I'd like to ask sort of a personal question, um, if you don't mind, and you don't have to answer, but what is it that brought you into this work? You're so passionate about it. Um, what brought you to doing this type of work here with the Y? Um, I actually was never exposed to the Y as a child. Um, I grew up playing sports, so I didn't go to Y camp. I went to sports camp my whole life. So until I took my first job with the Y 15 years ago, um, that was my first exposure to the Y. So I kind of came in, you know, just learning very green. Um, but the more I learned about what the Y did and the people that we helped, um, I started as a health and wellness director at our North Y in Liverpool. And I just kept saying, I need more. There's, there's gotta be more that I can do. And I, I need to use my skills differently. Um, 
you know, I love science. I'm kind of a nerd. And earlier today, Jess and I were speaking and she said, I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd, but I'm a fun nerd. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I like it. So yeah, I just wanted to do more, but then also I kept learning about all these people at the Y that, you know, had different things going on in their lives. And I was like, there's gotta be a way we can connect the two. Um, and I can't take all the credit. Um, Cheryl Pustai, one of our branch vice presidents, really was helpful in getting a lot of this off the ground too. So, you know, her and I work closely together in a lot of this stuff, but yeah, I just feel like, you know, you don't work at the Y unless you want to help people. And so I can kind of use my skills and my passion for science and, um, you know, put it to good use. Thanks so much, Jess. Um, let's see, you know, some of the things that I, that I'm curious about in terms of thinking about the power that these healthy living programs have are in breaking, and especially as we're thinking about bringing them into community. I love your example of the women's book club, right? Or like thinking about these groups of people that might want to expand the scope of what they do in terms of a social setting to include talking about their health, to make it a social community-based um, activity. Because I think that health issues specifically chronic health issues can be really taboo, particularly in some communities. And so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you and the folks that are running these programs and dealing with people directly are working to um, help make people more comfortable talking about um, some of these issues that they may find to be taboo, which, you know, in ignoring them only compounds the health problem. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, I think they see a, the Y as, you know, this friendly place, right? Where, where that community place and, you know, it's kind of like cheers, you know, everybody knows your name. Um, so that comfortable level there is already set. But what I like about a lot of our programs is they're group-based and having that group support of people like you that are going through the same thing. And we see it all the time. And I see that Stephanie Michaels, um, she works very, very closely with me. She's on the call. And that you know, we see this all the time. These people form these instant bonds. And then all of a sudden they're like, the, the conversation just is fostered by them. You know, we're just standing there as a facilitator and they're really leading the discussion and they're helping one another. So I think that's primarily the success of why these programs and why they see the why, the YMCA, um, as somebody that they can trust, that we're not saying we're the experts at everything, but we give them that venue to share and to um, meet other people. Whereas they're not gonna do that on that one-on-one -on -one appointment with their provider or at some, you know, maybe rehab. It's, it's the group base that I think really takes these programs to the next level. All right. Thanks so much, Jess. Um, well, it doesn't seem like we have too many questions or folks that would like to contribute uh, to the conversation tonight. You did such an amazing job at sort of like blowing us away with your presentation and conversation. It really was so informative. And I do look forward to sharing this online so that folks can access it, um, because I do think that these programs are things that are maybe a little bit less visible than some of the, you know, sort of like more flashy kinds of things that we see when we walk in. But the impact that they can make on people is lifelong, right? Um, so I would, in closing, I would just love to invite you for with any closing thoughts or anything that you'd love to leave us with tonight. So I just want to say thank you for joining. Hopefully you did learn, um, hopefully at least one thing. Uh, and if you can't take that one thing or the many things that you did learn and share it with as many, many people as you can, that's the best way that the YMCA can keep kind of spreading in all of these communities is that we just we need your voices to keep telling the story. And we're, we're grateful that you are part of you know, our call tonight and we hope that you can join us. Um, I'm very much looking forward to Bertram's talk next week. I can't wait to, to learn more from him. And he is, like Jess said, a very animated speaker and it will be definitely a good one. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jess. Um, I see Steph Michaels uh, typed in to say, after 10 years of working with you, you always learn something new. So um, I've only been working with you for a few months, um, but I also hold that to be true. Um, and I'd say that from Steph too. I actually, I learn a lot from her every time I uh, speak to her. Um, so I suppose with that, uh, thanks so much, Jess, for your like really informative and gracious presentation. We look forward to seeing everybody next week uh, for Bertram's presentation. And if you do have anyone, either your 
yourself or someone in your life who is interested in learning more about these programs or membership with the Y, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, as Jess mentioned, you know, one of the things that we do best is one-on-one -on -one connections and establishing relationships with people. So please do have them reach out um, and we're happy to work with them um, in whatever way is most appropriate. So thanks so much, everybody. Thanks so much, Jess. Uh, thanks to everyone on the call and everyone watching. Good night. Mm -hmm.